Welcome to BirdKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at part two of how to make a chef's knife from one of our standard stainless steel chef blanks. Now the knife that we're going to be finishing off today is actually uh, for a friend of mine, Bob Ramo, uh, from Shooter's Gauntlet in Pennsylvania. But the concept is we're going to be finishing off one of our chef knife blanks. We ended the, the first of this two-part series uh, after heat treating, sub-zero quench, and tempering. So we'll, we'll pick up the build from there. So we're going to do the post-heat treating cleanup. Now we're back to the 2x72. I'm using a handled magnet, vertical, and I'm going to grind with an 80 grit just to clean up the blade. You kind of want to smooth everything out and get rid of any slag that's on the blade. Get rid of all of that, that remaining color from the tempering. This process does not usually take all that long. You do have to keep a good eye on the blade. You really don't want to end up with any of the deeper uh, grind lines from the 60 grit that we used uh, prior to heat treating. And later on, if you do find any of those deeper grind lines, you can always go back. Uh, you can go back to the 80 and then just repolish again. Very important, you want to make sure that the whole handle area is completely flat. And that's important because you're going to want to mount scales or handle materials onto that area. Um, and if it's not flat, you're going to have a space. So take the time now, uh, clean up all of that a discoloration from the heat treating on the nice on the flat pattern of the 2x72 grinder. Okay, so this is the finish with the 80 grit. You can still see the, the grind lines. So we're gonna want to finish this off a little bit better. The next grit that we're gonna use is a 120. Now this felt is kind of important because it's a uh, 120 that is backed with felt. So it has a little bit of a give to it. It flexes and it really kind of smooths out any transitions that you have on the blade. You don't need a lot of time on this belt. Um, you really just want to get rid of the 80 grit grind lines. So a few passes will usually do it. Again really look over the blade at this point. Make sure there's not any of the deeper grind lines. If there is, go back to the 80, go back to the 120 and get rid of them. So this is the finish with the 120. We're really getting to a nice matte finish at this point. Now without going to a mirror finish, what I do like to, to do is after the 120, I go to a, a blue scotch bright belt. Cut back the speed a little bit if you have a uh, variable speed machine. And you don't have to spend a lot of time on the scotch bright. Just going to buff the blade a little bit. And if you're going to finish off with a matte finish, this is as far as you have to go. We're not going to go into mirror finishes on this, on this video, but this would be a nice, dull, matte finish, very appropriate for a chef's knife. Now this particular build, as I mentioned before, is going to have the logo of, of my friend's company, Shooter's Gauntlet, um, and his slogan from my cold, dead hands. Um, I'm going to electro etch that onto the blade. We're not really going to cover electro etching on this video. Uh, basically, it's done with cut out self-adhesive vinyl, um, which is cut out on a vinyl cutting machine, and it's etched with a 12-volt battery charger. It's actually 12 volts set at 2 amps with an electrolyte solution. It's actually a, a really neat way of, of getting images onto uh, the blade for decorative reasons. I, I do a lot of electro etching on my, on my projects. Uh, Bob also picked uh, Carvex. This is the red, white, and blue waving flag uh, scales. Very appropriate for this particular blade. I have pre-glued with epoxy 
uh, blue liners onto the back of each scales. Now I'm not going to cover uh, every little detail of attaching scales on this video. I've done multiple videos about handle attaching handle material, but a synopsis of it is we use the North Guard method, or I use the North Guard method. I'm going to glue uh, the blade onto the first side of the scales. Now I've already shaped and polished the, the forward edge because once it's glued onto the blade, you're never going to be able to get it at that that front edge to shape it or to polish it. I'm going to clamp that first half exactly where I want it. So that, that front edge is exactly where I want it on the blade. I'm then going to use a couple of clamps to clamp it into position. I'm going to use a paper towel to clean off any of the epoxy. Uh, this is a two-part epoxy that's squeezed out. And then I'm going to clean uh, that, that edge or that groove again and the entire blade with alcohol just to make sure that there's no epoxy residue on the blade itself. Once that dries, um, and it, right now it's already dried, I've already taken it out of the clamps, I'm going to use the pre-drilled holes through the blank as my drill guide and I'll drill through the first set of scales. Then I'm going to glue the second set of scales into position. Now I haven't shaped these scales yet, I haven't profiled them. And I do this on scales uh, that are either segmented or have some design that I want to match up uh, left to right. I'm going to match up the front edge of you know side number two with side number one so that it, it's perfectly matched. I'm going to make it so that the, the waving flag, the white and the blue segments all kind of match up on the sides and I'm going to clamp that into position. And then I'm going to again uh, remove any epoxy that's squeezed out from that forward uh, from that forward edge. Do it with a paper towel and a, and a plastic knife and then I, I clean it again with alcohol. The next step after that side has dried is to epoxy pins in place. Now I'm using stainless steel pins. You could certainly use brass. Brass is a little bit easier to cut. Um, I kind of like the look of the stainless. It also scuffs a little bit. It's a little harder to scuff. Once the epoxy is dry on the pins, I'm going to use a very coarse grit belt. This is a 36 grit belt on the 2x72, and I'm going to grind the pins flat with the handle material. Now notice I'm crunching this after only a couple of seconds. With the Carvex material, you don't really want those pins to get too hot. They'll damage the material, almost melt it. I'm then going to work on profiling the scales to match the shape of the, the handle of the blade. Now you could you could cut out the majority of this material with a pin saw or with a band saw. Um, it, it goes fast enough on the 2x72 with a coarse grit belt. This is a, still that same 36 grit belt and in a couple of minutes I can get rid of the majority of the excess material. You definitely want to wear a respirator when working with this. Um, there's a lot of particulate matter that, that gets up into the air. I'm going to use a small wheel attachment uh, to get at that, at that groove. And when you're finishing knife handles and, and the, uh, the profile of a blade, it's not just one belt. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this with an 80 grit, then I'm going to do it with a 120 grit. There's a lot of belt changes back and forth. You can use the uh, the small contact wheels on the on the top or the bottom of the 2x72 to get at the at some of the grooved areas. And then I'm going to start to shape the handles. So I curve the top of the handles right on the on the flat platen of the 2x72. A lot of people don't do it this way. I'm not telling you that this is the only way or the right way to do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. And this is um, done with an 80 grit belt, and then I'll duplicate the process with a 120. Just rounding over each of those sharp 90 degree corners. And it doesn't matter whether you're using uh, Carvex material or you're using wood or a hybrid material. The process is, is always basically the same. 
I then use an electric sander, an orbital sander. Uh, I do this with an 80 uh, and a 220. Actually, let me correct myself. With the Carbex, I started with the 220 and I went to a 3, 320. And then, of course, this hand sanding. Uh, the Carvex will polish up nicely, but you do have to sand it. Um, I sand it with an 800, 1000, and then quickly with a 2000 grit. And what I find with the sanding is that, you know, you sand it real quick to 2000, polish it, take a look for any deep scratches, go back and, and sand to, to uh, 800 and 1000 again to get rid of those scratches, and then again quickly to 2000. So it's, it's back and forth. I then use a felt uh, belt on the 2x72 with compound uh, to polish it and then I'll go over to a polishing wheel and that will basically finish up the build except for sharpening. Now sharpening I cover on a separate video uh, but I basically sharpen my knives on the 2x72 starting with a uh, 120 grit uh, then going to a 240, a 400, an 800, um, a 1200 and a 2000 grit belt. So a lot of belt changes in order to get that, that razor sharp edge. The finished product, after it's uh, sharpened and the handles are completely polished, and again this is the knife that I did for my, uh, my friend Bob Ramo over at uh, Shooter's Gauntlet in Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, I ask that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it if you could comment um, in the comment section below. I'd like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. And by all means, che um, please check out the book that Jason Northgard and I did called Introduction to Knife Making. We put that out last year. And that's available on BergKnifeMaking.com as well as Amazon.com. Thank you very much.